Jubilee year, Leviticus chapter 25 is the text for our consideration. The word Jubilee is used in verses 8 to 17 of our text. And this word literally means to sound the trumpet. The Hebrew word simply means a ram's horn. So for the people of Israel, they would begin each new year with the blowing of the trumpet on the first day of the seventh month. And 10 days later, they would celebrate or they would remember the Day of Atonement. During this time, there would be fasting, there would be a time of repenting and offering of the required sacrifices. But for the 50th year, as uh, Warren Worsby said, well, he says that at the close of the atonement, the horns are blown again. That's on the 50th year, the Jubilee year, to announce the year of Jubilee that had begun. And it would require a great deal of faith for the people to celebrate this special year because on the 49th year would be a Sabbath year. And so the fields, the vineyards, and the orchards would not be cultivated. And so they had to trust God for the seventh year, uh, which is the Sabbath year, and then the Jubilee year, which is the 50th year. So there were two years whereby uh, they would uh, have to trust the Lord for His provisions as they would not be cultivating the land during those times. And they would have to wait until the 51st year. So that's the third year after they have planted at the beginning of the 51st year to the time the harvest would come. And it was a, a time where they would exercise their faith that to know that God is the provider of the land that is given to them whereby uh, Israel would uh, uh, have that home, a place of rest for them. You remember when we begin this study, uh, we, Israel were slaves in Egypt and how God delivered them uh, from the bondage of uh, Egyptian servitude and how the Lord brought them out and how the Lord also uh, was gracious to promise that uh, a land that is flowing with milk and honey uh, would be given and allotted to them for, uh, for a witness as a nation of God's people. So God formed a nation uh, in the mount at Sinai. God provided them their uh, law or the constitution of the nation and uh, with the people uh, coming into the land, God would allot the land through Joshua uh, to all the various tribes, to the various families. And they would be landowners. And you see, because of this plan of God for allocation, uh, there will be, uh, in a sense, peace throughout the land because everyone would have their portion and everyone would be able to cultivate their land. But the Lord also made provision uh, here in the 50th year. Uh, well, as you look at this law, how we are able to see that God has a, a plan in mind that the society uh, does not have uh, develop into a situation of great uh, inequality. The rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, 
but there is a time where when the Lord would uh, do a reset and this was the Jubilee year. Uh, it is called a time of release because it will be a time, uh, verse 10 of uh, Leviticus 25 says that, uh, and ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof and it shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession and ye shall return every ye shall return every man unto his family and so the hebrew servant uh, would be set free and on this 50th year uh, you would find that uh, there will be restoration restoration in other words um, there is a way out for those who are indebted there's a way out for those who uh, by cert perhaps circumstances uh, found themselves in trouble uh, uh, financially and here is given uh, by God uh, a provision so that uh, there will be uh, a situation whereby uh, man, uh, by his own initiative, is unable to, uh, uh, in a sense, allow right, the fallenness, the greed, to uh, exact itself uh, in the weaker members of the society. And that is the reason uh, why uh, the Lord provided this Jubilee year. It was a time of release, a time of restoration, and it was also a time when uh, they would uh, be resting from their labor. Warren Wesby, he said, well, he said, during the year of Jubilee, the people were forbidden to carry on their normal agricultural pursuits, but had to live on whatever the land produced. In other words, uh, during this time of rest, they had to uh, depend upon the old grain, uh, which God would uh, provide for them on the 48th year, before they reach the Sabbath year, which is the 49th year, and then the Jubilee year, the 50th year, and to wait again to plant their crop on the 51st year and to receive it only at the harvest time of the 51st year. So you, you see there, uh, there is quite a number of years that, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is a gap between the time where they would use their strength right, to procure uh, their subsistence. Why did God do that? Well, as you uh, take time to think and meditate, you would see that, well, the Lord wanted Israel to know that He is the one that has provided for them. It is easy uh, for men by his own labor and strength to think that his uh, success comes from himself and therefore it is also subjected to abuse and therefore the Lord here is providing uh, a time whereby God would allow uh, a time where there would be restoration. And so Warren Worsby, he said, well, these laws made it impossible for ruthless, wealthy, real estate speculators to accumulate vast land holdings and thus uh, upset the economy. Even the poorest Israelite family received its land back and by working the land, they could gain enough wealth to meet their needs and perhaps the needs of others. So the year of Jubilee provided a new beginning for the relief slaves and the landowners and this kept poverty and inequality to a minimum. They were not to oppress one another but to remember that the land was God's 
and they were only his tenants. And so, as we think about uh, what, what, his, what the Lord had provided for them, uh, you would notice that in, the, in hindsight, uh, on hindsight, uh, the nation of Israel uh, did not celebrate the Jubilee year uh, since the beginning uh, when God allowed them to get into the land. Uh, um, they did not, uh, they did not um, uh, follow or they did not uh, 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 adhere uh, to this jubilee law uh, that God provided for them. And it is interesting if you uh, look at uh, page fifth page eight of your notes, uh, you would be able to see uh, how this, uh, <coughs> in this uh, jubilee year, uh, as you look at Israel's history, uh, uh, there was no actual uh, celebration, as it were, of this jubilee year. Right? Um, Spence, he make a historical check and here it's observed that Joshua lived to see what would be called the first jubilee year. Judges 2 verse 6 to 10. But here again, uh, we have not uh, seen the actual description of uh, the jubilee being uh, enacted. And then during the time of uh, 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 the kings, right? David was born 10 years after Saul became king. And if you look at the chronology, it would be between the 7th and the 8th Jubilee year. Again, here we have not a record concerning the, the celebration of the Jubilee year. And uh, you know, the prophet Jeremiah did say to Israel uh, why they were taken to captivity. Uh, for 70 years in Babylon, well, it was uh, for the fact that they did not keep 70 uh, Sabbath years. Right? So 70 times 7, that's 490 years. Uh, that was how long after they entered the land that they did not, throughout the period of their history, uh, obey this Sabbath law that God has given them. It's interesting that uh, Spence noted here, that the Assyrian captivity of Israel, that is the northern tribes, the ten tribes, was on the 14th Jubilee year. The 14th Jubilee year that, uh, that uh, Israel uh, had to, were deported uh, out. Uh, the, the land was taken over by the Assyrians. And it was in the 16th Jubilee year that the Babylonian captivity of Judah take place. So the southern tribes, right, was uh, uh, the Babylonians came through the King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, where the temple was destroyed and Israel was deported uh, to Babylon. And it was during the 16th Jubilee year. So you would notice that indeed when God gives his laws, uh, we, as God's people, uh, are taught how we need to take time to think about them, to understand them, and to also obey them. And this is a very pertinent lesson that you would uh, notice happen uh, during the time of uh, Israel's history. And uh, it is also observed uh, uh, Spence said, the, op the efforts of the restoration, that is the second temple, after their captivity, they came back, uh, Cyrus, the Persian king, gave a decree to rebuild uh, the temple uh, during the, through the efforts of Ezra and uh, Nehemiah, who, uh, and this was during the time between the, in the 17th and the 18th Jubilee years, and you notice uh, how uh, for the nation of Israel, uh, this law of 
the jubilee, the restoration, the release uh, was not really practiced at all. Uh, although God gave the law, um, why is it so difficult? Like As you think about it, uh, it's difficult because you see someone who already owned the land, someone already have a slave uh, to... Uh, release it means that they would lose the benefit of that labor, of the use of the land. Um, and the human depraved mind, uh, uh, covetous as it is, you would notice that uh, find it difficult. And therein uh, lies uh, the danger. Uh, the danger. And so. Uh, you would notice also that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the 29th Jubilee year. On the 29th Jubilee year. And so, uh, if you were to uh, make a, a calculation, right, uh, that's 1,450 years. Uh, that was from the time of... Uh, the law, where the law was given, uh, exactly right, 1,450 years. If you truck the time Christ comes, the period between uh, BC and AD, right, from the time God gave the law in, to Moses, where Moses recorded it in Mount Sinai, 1,450 years. So it was a 29th Jubilee year that the Lord came and he provided that time of release in the sense that all who look to him uh, would have their sins forgiven. All who look to Christ would have their sins uh, nullified. Christ took uh, our sins upon the cross. And it's interesting that when our Lord was upon the cross, uh, during the time from noon to 3 p.m. before he gave up the ghost, the whole land was in darkness. He was bearing, as it were, the darkness of the entire, uh, the sins of the entire uh, 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 fallen uh, race of men uh, whom he redeemed. By His grace. And so we notice here that uh, indeed it is uh, a time whereby uh, God did make the restoration. And it's interesting that, you know, when God made that restoration, uh, He also provided that message uh, of that salvation, not only to the Jews, but in the New Testament, to the church, to the Gentiles, the church that consists of not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. And so when, when Peter, <clears throat> after Pentecost, uh, Peter was given a vision. You remember there was a vision whereby he saw the animals, clean and unclean, falling down from heaven. Three times he saw the vision. And then the Lord said to him that what I have made clean, call it not unclean. And God sent Peter to meet uh, the Cornelius and his family. Remember, Cornelius was the man who was uh, the first, as it were, from the Italian band. He was the first Gentile convert. Um, and indeed, when Christ died upon the cross, right, there was a restoration and God provided a way for uh, Gentile evangelism which is the purpose of God when he began the nations you remember the time uh, last Lord's Day we were studying uh, the origin of nations how the nations all begin with Noah and his three sons after the flood. They were all serving 
the one living and true God, uh, after they built, after they disembarked from the ark, uh, the first thing that they did was to build an altar unto God. So a uh, blood sacrifice was given, pointing to Christ. And that sweet sever that ascended to heaven, the Lord said, I accept. And the Lord said that He will not put a, uh, a curse upon the earth again by a global flood, and He set the bowl in the sky in order to provide for this um, promise uh, that man, that He has shown Himself merciful, uh, and He allow, uh, He allow uh, this uh, man to have that new beginning after the flood. So Noah built an altar to God. It was a uh, one God. And they were one family, one blood, they were one people, they were one, uh, as it were, nation. Of course, uh, through uh, Noah's and his family, you see, as we saw in Genesis chapter 10, God uh, caused them to, gave them a law to overspread the earth. And God caused them to be fruitful and to multiply and to, over, uh, to overspread the earth. The purpose was, that, was this, that there would be uh, men and women made in the image of God, uh, thankful to God, who would worship Him throughout the whole world. Uh, this was God's purpose. And... And uh, you would notice also that this was uh, not the case, right? as we would be seeing in the next few weeks on the Lord's Day, uh, that uh, men began to again uh, go on their own. And we spoke about the man called Nimrod, right? how he began a kingdom. And that kingdom... Uh, uh, evolved itself uh, to Babel and Babel or uh, Babylon uh, that was the place whereby there was a one uh, tower that was built a high to heaven and all the world was gathered together and God scattered them and then began in Genesis chapter 12 God's call to Abraham to begin a nation that would reach out to all the nations of the world. Uh, last year during our church camp, we, we mentioned this. Israel in prophecy. Israel was that nation by which God created in order to be a witness to all the nations of the world. And through the nation of Israel will come forth the Messiah. And He will be the Saviour. And we are told uh, to proclaim throughout the world, that this is the Saviour of the world. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, coming from the loins of Israel. He is the Saviour. And Spence observed well, he says, in our own generation, the 26th or the 27th, the 67th Jubilee year will be the year 1979. And the next Jubilee year is the year 2029. And this year is 2020. So the next Jubilee year is 2029. So this section closes the, uh, the book of Leviticus with the sound of a trumpet ushering in the Jubilee year. And it is this time that they would restore the tribal and individual inheritance. It was a glorious event and it magnifies the mercy, the great mercy and the grace of God in allowing this restoration. And so coming to what we were mentioning in our text uh, today concerning the kinsman redeemer 
uh, how um, a kinsman who was willing and able to uh, pay the price could redeem uh, another of its relative uh, of the of their servitude of their slavery or of the land in which was given away and uh, we see this uh, kinsman uh, redeemer uh, idea uh, being enacted uh, during the time uh, of uh, during the time when God uh, called the young Moabite lady by the name of Ruth to come back with, his, with her mother-in-law, Naomi, to Israel. And uh, the kinsman redeemer was the man, Boaz, who was a relative of uh, the of Naomi uh, through uh, her husband and through the son and how uh, he was willing to give seed to the Ahimelech family and uh, to marry Ruth. And this was, well, in fact, the law was uh, uh, practiced in that sense. Right? We see this uh, happening uh, in in the book of uh, Ruth, uh, but for the for the uh, practice of the, the jubilee year, uh, whereby the entire nation would uh, make a redemption uh, for throughout the land. Well, it did not happen in Israel, although the land, the law was given, and as we think about it. In hindsight, uh, you realize why is it like this? How is it that it did not happen? Well, we would attribute it right, to uh, the fact that uh, the fallen human nature uh, is indeed uh, require. Uh, Restrain and God in His law provided for it, and it is for posterity to learn the good lesson uh, how uh, we can uh, follow these principles uh, whereby uh, God has laid out uh, in order that uh, uh, th there would be. Uh, restoration and release for the oppressed and we look forward to the time when our Lord Jesus Christ would return again and we believe that it is very soon and the Bible uh, tells us uh, through the words of the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans that the world groaneth and travaileth waiting for the redemption. What is the redemption? Well, the return of our Lord and Jesus, Saviour Jesus Christ, where He would return and He would set up His kingdom upon earth when God Himself would rule through His Son Jesus Christ for a thousand years and all human kingdoms would end. God's kingdom would come and this will be a time of great restoration. Is it coming? Well, we believe that it is soon. May the Lord help His people to prepare. Prepare for the time of His return and it will be a wonderful time for His people because we would be released uh, released from the bondage of this body. Right? <laughs> we all know how this body uh, doesn't get stronger each day, but gets weaker. But when the Lord comes, He would grant us uh, a new body, glorious 
incorruptible. And inheritance also that he would give us, all right, that, uh, that uh, will never fade away. And we look forward to our eternal inheritance. And we look forward uh, to the release from sin and the bondage of sin and a new body that God would create for us. Uh, may God be gracious as we look to that jubilee, the trumpet sound, when our Lord Jesus will return and bring His church to glory. May the Lord uh, bless His word to the strengthening of the hearts of His people for His own honour and glory. Amen.